Mike, will you be sensible? Come on, look, it's as dead as they come, it's dead. Ah! Oh, no! So oh, kill him! Ah! Oh, no! The heart! Shoot him in the heart! Welcome to another Chucky Theory. Hello folks, thank you for joining me today. So, I am going to be talking about Seed of Chucky, yes. Seed of Chucky, the red-headed stepchild of the Child's Play franchise. And I'm not gonna lie, but for many years, I disliked this movie. I don't want to say hated. Hated is too passionate of a word. I didn't hate it. But it is safe to say that it is, and still probably is, my least favorite film in the franchise. But for better or worse, it is canon to the rest of the series, and I'm willing to respect that to some degree. And I'm even willing to set aside some differences to focus on this one scene that bothered me for many fucking years. Remember this scene at the end? When Chucky's arm is gifted to Glenn as a birthday present and it comes out and chokes him? Now, at the time, I just looked at it as artistic license, you know, some sort of like, ooh, moment to leave room for a sequel, because you gotta do that, you gotta lay little seeds to lay down the next movie. And that makes sense. And then after a while, I just wrote it off as like, maybe it was just some weird fever dream Glenn was having. But after giving it a considerable amount of examination, well, is it really that far-fetched that this scene happened? Is it really something that crazy or out of the realm? I mean, his arm comes to life and starts choking him. Well, we have seen this before, haven't we? In the original film from 1988. Before he meets his demise with that little piece of lore they dropped on us, you know which one I'm talking about. Heart. His heart is almost human. It's the only way through the heart. And probably because it was a contribution from director Tom Holland, who rewrote Don Mancini's original Blood Buddy script, it pretty much got written off. But I want to say that that concept, you know, the only way to stop Chucky is to shoot him through the heart, still holds true. And if you don't shoot him through the heart, he is literally an unstoppable force unless if you immobilize him. Now, unfortunately, I could not find any sources to fully back this up, but I remember years ago, it was either an interview with Don Mancini or maybe something I read in an article. One of the original concepts for the opening of Child's Play 3 was going to be different. It wasn't going to be where the Play Pal Toys, you know, reopens the Good Guy Doll Factory and relaunches the product. Instead, we were going to get a couple of preteens who were going to be joking around about the urban legends of Chucky. They go ahead and break into the abandoned Good Guy Doll Factory and basically fuck around and find out. Press a few buttons, a few machines get rolling, and then Chucky's blood through some sort of mousetrap board game hijinks finds its way into a new doll. And even the comic book from Innovation from the 90s had its own twist on this in which a rat bites Chucky's remains and again, through mousetrap board game hijinks, the blood finds its way into another doll. And that's just a little too Final destination -y for me. That's just... No, thank you. I do prefer what we ended up getting. It just makes more sense from a logistic standpoint. Plus, it gives more rhyme to have more sequels if the factory was up and running and still producing more of these good guy dolls. But there was one interesting little piece of information. So the preteens, one boy, one girl, which by the way, the boy was going to be played by Jason Ritter, son of John Ritter, and John Ritter was actually going to be appearing in Child's Play 3 in a small role. That did not pan out, and I'm kind of glad it didn't because he ended up in Bride of Chucky, and honestly, I couldn't think of anybody better for that role. And I'm glad to have the late John Ritter's inclusion in this franchise in any format. The young female preteen was going to come across a piece of Chucky's face and it snaps at her. That I find very interesting, and even though we did not get that in the final cut of the film, that would have been a cool thing to see. I think it would have been a little creepy and definitely very scary because 
that basically just shows that the original idea was, was that Chucky never died to begin with at the end of Child's Play 2. Therefore, he was still able to move dismembered parts of his body. Just like in Child's Play 1, before he got shot in the heart. This probably also explains why the blood in his plastic-coated carcass from Child's Play 2 was still fresh. Going back to Seed of Chucky, he's able to move his arm because, well, we saw how he met his demise. Glenn dismembered him completely, limb from limb, and his head, but his chest was intact, his heart was fine. I do realize that, yes, Chucky did get axed in the chest in this scene, and that was something I forgot about when I started recording this video. Um, but you could debate whether if it actually reached his heart or not. I'm just going to opt to say that it didn't. I don't think that was a fatal wound. We've seen Chucky take worse punishment. So he was never dead. He never died at the end of Seed of Chucky either. The other films prior to that, well, let's do the math. Child's Play 1, he got shot in the heart. Child's Play 2, his head blew up, heart intact still moving stuff, at least according to the original script concept. Child's Play 3, bladed in an industrial fan, and honestly, he was chopped to bits. I'm sure his heart was part of that. In Bride of Chucky, he was shot to death right through the chest. It's safe to say his heart got hit. Chucky did not meet an end in Curse of Chucky, at least until the post credit scene with Andy. Then we find out in the next movie that Andy's keeping his head around as some sort of weird friend-slash-punching bag, if you will, to let out some sexual frustration after failed dates, I'm sure. And this gives credence to the idea that maybe Andy might be a little bit on the up-and-up as to how some of this voodoo shit works, and purposely kept him alive so he couldn't hurt anyone else, because if you shoot him dead completely, Yes, resurrection can always happen. After all, he is a supernaturally possessed doll, so whether if you kill him completely or just immobilize him, apparently he will come back in some way, shape, or form. So while the original idea of shooting him through the heart to stop him completely was more or less never brought up again, it doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't still hold true. And this is supported by the fact that he could still move his dismembered limbs. We haven't seen him do it any other time, but the couple times we have, it's just kind of odd how his chest and his heart still remain intact. It adds up, and I like that. Well, that's all I got for this one, folks. Of course, I will have more theory videos like this. I have a few ideas rattling up here. And if you want to see more videos like this, 